And welcome back to Tech Tuesday. <clears throat> so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of the paintbrushes that I use uh, in miniature painting or in any kind of painting really. Um, relying on one type of tool um, can be limiting. So I use a lot of airbrush, but I also use a lot of paintbrush in what I do. Um, so I'll show you the brushes that I use and why kind of I choose what I choose and the differences between them. So my go-to uh, paintbrush is the Winsor Newton Series 7 uh, Kalinsky brush and uh, this is primarily a watercolor brush this has been a uh, this has been the watercolor brush of choice for for a very long time it's kind of at the top of the food chain um, it's made from Kalinsky which is uh, which is an animal that's located only in one area in Siberia uh, it's um, it's the the hair of the tail is what they use and it's just known for its incredible strength its ability to shape it in a in a just a fantastic point um, it's very soft it holds a lot of paint um, it's very durable it's just an all-around um, amazing um, fur uh, or hair to use in uh, in, in paint brushes so uh, I generally use either the size double zero or the size zero which is above and you can see the difference between the two sizes it's only one step on the scale but it's a pretty big step uh, so these are the two brushes that I use. Let me show you a bigger one so you can kind of get a feel for what the hair looks like. So Kalinsky has got this beautiful reddish color. And again, um, even this brush, this is a number six, um, which is a very large brush. But if I wet this and tap this out, even the six forms a, a just a crazy point. They're, they are pretty amazing paint brushes. So these are made by Winsor and Newton, and uh, like I said, they last a very long time, uh, as as illustrated by the label on this one. Uh, I don't generally use the bigger brushes, so they last quite a long time for me. Uh, but this was actually something that was given to me, so its its age is is pretty pretty crazy. They haven't used this label in quite a while, so uh, they are they are great brushes. So as you move along, or lower down the scale, essentially you get into certain. Um, Kind of um, different different styles of brushes, but are designed to do the same thing to cost a little bit less. Let me show you the Da Vinci brush. So this Da Vinci brush is uh, made of. Uh, they call it Harbin Kalinsky for Da Vinci. This is a two aught, so it's the same size as that other one. Uh, so this is taken from a different animal. Uh, it comes from a different part of um, Asia. Uh, so it's. You know, I'll get into you know the ethics of harvesting um, fur in a second, but uh, but Da Vinci is using this Harbin Kalinsky um, for their brushes, and um, yeah, it's it's it works very very well. So natural hair brushes are going to perform very similar. There is certainly an argument between one animal and another, um, but uh, but for the most part, for us, um, you know, you're going to get a lot of miles out of different styles of brushes, different brands and, and, and different types of natural hair. Uh, so you can just kind of keep your eye out. The important thing is, is to know what's, what's fully 100% natural and then what gets into, say, synthetic blends or full synthetic brushes. Um, as long as you know that, um, it'll give you a good, kind of a good feel of, of what you're getting. So the, uh, the Harbin Kalinsky, it's a little bit less than the uh, Windsor Newton brushes, but still, you know, I mean, when I say, uh, you know, they're expensive, they're expensive for their size. So um, if you get like that size six Windsor Newton brush, it's, it's an expensive brush. Um, but when you're dealing with miniatures and small brushes, these brushes aren't they're relatively expensive for other things you can buy, but overall they're not expensive, so they're certainly worth the investment. So that is the Harbin Kalinsky brush from Da Vinci. Okay, so when you start getting into synthetic brushes and synthetic blends, there are all different kinds. I'm going to grab this one because I really like this brush a lot. This is made by uh, Kafka. This is a 5 odd. It's actually a liner and a, or a script brush. So you notice how long the, uh, the the bristles are in this. So in the Kafka brushes, this is uh, natural hair, but it's also got some synthetic hair blended into it as well. So the synthetic hairs are very durable. Um, they hold up very well, but in general, synthetic hairs don't hold the same kind of point that a natural haired brush uh, 
holds. Now, when you get a, a really good brush maker like Kafka, um, they can put it together in a way that will give you, you know, something that really, really works well. And again, the advantage to the synthetic haired brushes are they start to drop in price because they're easier to make uh, or easier to get the components to make them. Uh, so uh, it's something to kind of keep an eye on as well. So the, let me show you one more here that shows you a full synthetic brush. And this one's made by Princeton, and this is their Velvet Touch brush. And the this is fully synthetic. Um, so again, you know, it'll, for most parts, it'll do the job if you're getting into like super tight details. Um, you gotta understand that a synthetic brush has a life expectancy that the natural bristled brushes don't. They kind of wear out quicker. The upside is you pay far less for them. They're about a third of the price of a natural haired brush. So um, so that's kind of nice. What I do love about this Princeton brush is the size of the handle. Having that more pencil-like handle just, it feels very comfortable when you're working with it. Um, so the smaller brushes, you know, you have to get used to having a real small handle on those. Uh, but yeah, Princeton did a good job on this. And again, there are a million different brush manufacturers out there. Uh, you just have to know what you're getting. So do a little bit of research to figure out what it is is in the brush and how they make it. And um, it'll keep you on the right track. It'll let you try out different things and you'll know kind of what to expect. Again, natural bristled brushes are going to hold their points better. Generally, they hold paint better. Um, but they're you know, they're not saying at all that the synthetic brushes aren't going to do the job for you. It's just what happens is, let me zoom in on this one because I think this is already starting to do it. It is. So what happens with these brushes as they age, if you'd see it, it, see the tip of the brush is kind of tilting to the right there? That is what it is. When these brushes start to go, that's what happens. And um, unfortunately, with some of the brushes, that happens fairly quickly. Um, the more expensive brushes, it doesn't happen very quickly. So that's something to uh, to kind of keep in mind as you get these brushes. Also the point, you notice how that has kind of a rounded over point now. That's also something that happens. The synthetic brushes um, sometimes have that, you know, the, the less expensive brushes kind of round over and don't give you that super sharp razor point for their life. Uh, but it's okay, like I said, because you can take these brushes and use them for different things. You know, you don't have to use these for the super micro detail. You can be a little bit rougher with these and not worry about, you know, ruining a, a really expensive brush. So there is reason to have, you know, different types of brushes in your, in your lineup. Okay, so now, before I let you guys go, we'll talk about the ethics of, of art supplies. There is a great uh, blog post by... Um, Jeff Chester, if you look him up, he talks about the ethics of art supplies. And um, it's nice because he kind of lays it all out. So um, uh, not only brushes, but other things too. Um, so the ethics behind these brushes. The Kalinsky Sable brushes were actually um, halted from coming into the U.S. for, for, a, uh, for a period of time um, because the Kalinsky um, hair is only farmed from one animal. And um, it's it's it, it was unsure from the U.S. Fish and Game Department how these, how the fur was being harvested, whether it was being done responsibly or not. So, uh, for a period of time, these, the hair for this brush was uh, was actually restricted, um, and for good reason. You know, we don't want to be responsible for you know blowing up a species, for sure. Now, the thing of it is, the the uh, the Kalinsky is mainly f harvested for its fur, not for its tail. Um, so the tail is a byproduct, and that's what brushes are made from. So the brush, the animals aren't being killed for paint brushes, but still, the only way to get the hair from them is to trap them and kill them. Um, so if that's not done responsibly, um, we, you know, we lose that animal. Uh, so fur trapping has been, you know, it's been a, it's been both a staple and a problem for for hundreds of years. Uh, so that's something we wrestle right, with right now. Working with a company like Windsor & Newton, who's responsible, um, is, you know, that, that's, that gives a lot of weight to taking care of that. However, you have to kind of weigh your moral feelings about, about you know, how the animals are, are harvested, essentially, and whether, you know, you even want to get into that. So the same thing with the Harbin Kalinsky brushes. The Kalins any kind of natural haired brushes, just kind of keep in mind that the animals aren't shaved and then put back out in the wild. Um, Kalinsky's, uh, they, they don't, 
they don't do well in captivity. So all the animals that are that are harvested for those brushes are 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 wild. Um, as far as the harbin brushes, I don't know. Uh, I think they're just they're just wild as well. I don't think they're in captivity. You know, essentially raised for their fur. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too. So you know, it's 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 really your call. You know, um, on 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 how you feel about about you know harvesting animals for for our craft um so so that's something to keep in mind too but read jeff chester's blog post it'll kind of give you the full rundown on how things work and you know the products that we use and i will put a link to his blog post as well so you guys can check it out um but you know knowing is is all the battle you know it helps you make an educated decision and uh, helps you kind of you know navigate you know the, these the the art supplies that we choose to use so there you go so that is my rundown um for some of the brushes that i use i'm always looking at new brushes you know everything from super inexpensive brushes all the way up to really nice brushes um so as i find different things i will keep you guys up on that too um for now though those windsor newton brushes are still number one for me they they outperform everything i've ever tried so uh, so that's what I got. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this Tech Tuesday. If you have any ideas for a Tech Tuesday, please let me know. Um, if you would uh, be so kind as to like and subscribe and click that bell icon, I'll make sure you guys get updates and all the new videos. And um, yeah, we'll keep going. So for Steve Leahy and Tech Tuesday, thanks very much. And I'll catch you guys the next time.